him I pray. And everybody said, as we have studied this morning in our side of scripture on love and submission in the home. We have question time now. And the question is, why should there be love and submission in the home? Another question is, if we're going to build a strong home, a happy home, a loving home, a home that produces children that will be on top of their world. What are the elements and who are the people that will build such a home? The question is, for such a home, profitable, happy, forward-looking, progressive, and for such a home where every member, the wife, the husband, the children, where every member is fulfilled and happy, and none could wish for a better home. This is the home I would like to spend the whole of my life. Who are the people and what are the elements that build such a home? Those are the questions we're looking at today. The elements, the parts, the components, the people that build a happy home, a godly home, a fulfilled, fulfilling home, a progressive home, a home where everybody wants to abide. The three of the elements we're looking at. Number one, the heart. Number two, the head. Number three, the hands. Number one, the heart. The heart is the homemaker. The heart is the wife. And it's the heart that must be in a good condition so that the contribution of that heart to the home will make it a pleasant home to live in. A loving, lovely home. First Peter chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 4. First Peter chapter 3 verse 4 But let it be the healing man of the heart He's talking about the wife After he has spoken about Do this, do this Don't let it be this, let it be this And then he gives us an example An example from the Old Testament Of the family of Abraham and Sarah now he mentions in the middle of that whole passage the hidden man of the heart telling us then the importance of the wife at home and that the wife should act should be placed centrally as the heart if you consider a man any man any person you will see that the heart is very important. The feet may be sound and strong. The hands may be strong and active. The eyesight may be good and vigilant. And the tongue may speak well. If something is wrong with the heart, the whole body is gone. And so, if the homemaker if the wife is to be the heart, that heart, that wife, that homemaker must be healthy. That homemaker must be who she ought to be. And when you think of yourself every time as the heart, you understand what the heart does. The heart is the seat of love. That's where, that's a fountain of love. And when you understand the heart in a person, 
is the one pumping out blood to every part of the body and the wife as the homemaker the wife as the heart is the one that is flowing love to every part of the body the husband receives his portion the wife the children receive their portion and if there is any loss of the flow of the blood to the rest of the body you know that everything was shut down the same thing with the wife the heart of the family and the heart of the home if there is a break if there is a cessation if there is a stopping of that love that ought to flow from the heart to every part of the body whatever the family has whatever the family may possess there is something wrong with that body with that family the heart is a seat of forgiveness and the nature of the wife because she's a help me she knows i must have this heart i am the heart i must be loving every time and the forgiveness must flow out every time because when that stops again you look at the heart of a person that forgiveness has now stopped it's like i'm offended it's like this family cannot go on it's like i'm at enmity to everybody and then the heart is waiting for the husband to come for the children to come until they beg i'm not going to forgive think about yourself again as the heart it's like the heart is stopping every legitimate function and until the hand will come and plead and the feet will come and plead the heart will not send forth the blood to every part of the body but you understand it's a cycle it is when the blood flows to every part even to the brain to the head to the hands to every part that's how the hands and the feet and every part will be able to do their part and so you understand how central the wife is she is the seat of love and the seat of forgiveness the heart is the seat of compassion of mercy and the lord has so constituted and created the wife that she'll be merciful she'll be compassionate she'll be caring and if you go along with that constitution and creation the family will be what it ought to be it's the seat of care and it's the seat of cooperation actually it is the heart that uh, kind of cooperates with every part and giving every part what every part ought to have and it is how every part will be strong every part will be agile every part will be active and the heart is a seat of intimacy the heart is the seat of intimacy is the wife that makes allowance for that intimacy my husband is not a talking my husband is not relating well understand your position don't wait you are the one at the very spring and foundation and fountain of that intimacy remember once again the wife is the heart of the family and as we look at the scriptures i'm coming to songs of solomon and in songs of solomon i'm reading from chapter 8 and i'm reading from verse 6 songs of solomon chapter 8 and we're reading from verse 6 it tells us in verse 6 still about the heart which is the seat of love which is the seat of compassion and the seat of forgiveness it says in the songs of solomon chapter 8 verse 6 set me as a seal upon thine heart there's a heart talking to the heart 
this is a deep expressing her desire to the heart of the husband and it says set me as a seal upon thine heart as a seal upon thine arm for love is as strong as this love is as strong as death if you allow the vitality of the love the originality of the love and the spring of love to keep on flowing and you know that anything that happens either from the husband or from the children or from the in-laws or from money issues that will stop the love wants to stop your function as the heart and you say no that must not happen because you understand you are the heart of the home and that you are strong as death jealousy is cruel as the grave and the coals thereof are coals of fire it's talking about fervent love it's talking about a passion that wants to be everything and do everything for the family it says it has the most vehement flame the new testament puts it in a very clear directive way it tells us in first peter chapter 1 verse 22 first peter chapter 1 verse 22 seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit unto unfeigned love unpretending love you have given yourself to a kind of love that is not superficial it's a love that is transparent we can see through it's a love that is felt it's a love that is recognized it's a love that is perfect it's a love that is uh, passionate it says that you see that you love one another this is a general um, a general verse for everyone but we're applying it to the family now with a pure heart fervently the heart is very central and the heart is very important as we think of the wife and the heart of the husband is affected by the heart of the family in proverbs chapter 31 proverbs chapter 31 i read here from verse 10 who can find a virtuous woman for a price is above rubies look at the next verse the heart of her husband does safely trust in her the heart of the homemaker the heart of the wife does her function very well the husband receives that and the husband rests on that it affects his own heart too it affects his own disposition too it affects his confidence in that why too and the heart of the husband does safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil look at verse 12 she the heart will do him good and not evil all the days of her life come back to a person having a heart he has a good heart he has a heart that is sending blood to every part of the body he has a heart that will not fail he has a, a heart that is immune to attack there's no heart attack and it's not slumping it's not a falling down suddenly she's always active and always positive always practical and because of that 
the husband is not suspecting maybe today things are not going to be good he knows that the heart of the home is always what it ought to be and therefore the heart of the husband safely draws him huh? and he knows she will not do do me evil she will do me good all the days of my life now when the heart is all right when the heart is healthy and strong other parts of the body too they'll be healthy they'll be sound they'll be strong and the head would also have been a share of the blood being pumped from the heart the head too will be all right in our local language the head will be correct and nobody will say the head of that family is not correct the head is proper the head is correct and the head is dutiful that brings me to the second person as a builder of the home as a lifter up of the home the head of the home the headship of the husband the husband is the head look at this we're looking at ephesians chapter 5 ephesians chapter 5 we're reading from verse 23 for the husband is the head of the wife. For the husband is the head over the heart. The husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. And he is the savior of the body. He is the savior of the body. What does that mean? Let's say a person is going on the road. A car is coming. And he might be crushed if it were not for the head. That's where the eyes are, is a, a kind of uh, placed. That's where the ears are also established. That's where instruction the head of instru the, the instruction for the whole body is centered in the head as the heart has sent the blood to every part of the body and to the head look at this car coming is the head with the connections of the brain and the all the electrons and everything there that will quickly send a message to the eyes look at your car that's the head that's not the heart and then to hear the sound of the horn that the car is coming and to hear the sound of that car is the head not the heart and to quickly give instruction to the feet to move and to run or to step back is the head not the heart and so the head is the one that directs that's what it means when it says the husband is the head of the wife of the home he gives direction it's the head that thinks it is the deposit area of thoughts of thinking and when you have a thinking head a directing head you have a planning head is the head that plans is the head that leads and says you can move now danger is over get up and move or stay don't go yet another car is coming is the head that gives direction is the head that leads is the head that rules the ruling is guiding let's look at genesis chapter 3 and i read from verse 16 genesis chapter 3 we're reading from verse 16 in verse 16 talking about 
the head talking about the husband but 16 unto the woman he said i will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception in sorrow thou shalt bring forth children you understand some people are for either old testament or new testament and they never think of the things that are general the things that supersede old covenant or new covenant this verse cuts across old testament and new testament because the women in conception still are pain in child bearing and now it says that desire shall be to thy husband that desire shall be to thy husband and he shall rule over thee the ruling there is not the ruling of a tyrant it's not the ruling of an oppressor it's the ruling of a guide of a director of a manager the one that shows the way and guides the family and coordinates the efforts of the family and tells the family where we ought to go in first corinthians chapter 11 first corinthians chapter 11 i'm reading here from verse 3 but I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ and the head of the woman is the man and the head of Christ is God. He's talking about the headship of the family and he says the head of the, uh, of the wife of the woman is Christ sorry the head of the man is christ the head of the woman is the man look at verse 5 but every woman that prays or prophesies with her head uncovered her own normal natural head dishonors her head dishonors her husband it's like somebody is not under submission for that is even all as if she was shaven verse 7 for a man indeed ought not to cover his head for as much as he is the image and the glory of god but the woman is the glory of the man the wife is the glory of the husband and this head, as we have noticed in the word of God, is not a tyrannical head. It's a loving head to you. Come back to Ephesians chapter 5. Reading from verse 25. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. The head is giving. He gives instruction. He gives enlightenment. He gives uh, wisdom. And he gives also material things that the family needs so that the family will live comfortably. Look at verse 28. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. How about that? He that loveth his wife loveth his wife. Remember now, the husband is the head, and the wife the heart. And when the head, the head loves the heart, the heart is excited, happy, and the heart is a kind of enthusiastic in doing what she ought to do. And she sends the blood, and she sends the love, 
and she sends the compassion and she sends the mercy all across the whole family even to the children and so when the head makes the heart happy and makes the heart fulfilled the heart will reciprocate to the head and to the whole of the body for no man in verse 29 ever yet hated his own flesh but nourishes and cherishes it even as the lord the church for we are members of his body and of his flesh and of his bones for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother is mature enough to live alone for this cause shall the husband leave his father and mother is not running back home for every little problem that happens in his own family with his wife for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife and they and they too shall be one flesh no divorce amen no separation amen no turning backs against each other amen this is a great mystery but i speak concerning christ and the church nevertheless let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself and the wife see that she reverence she honored and she respect her husband the heart that's the wife the head that's the husband the hands now husband and wife do not stay indoor every day all the day they must supply the needs of the family and so if the family is going to be happy going to be fulfilled and going to be prospered they must understand on both sides they are hands to work and provide for the family it tells us in ephesians chapter 4 verse 28 ephesians 4 28 let him that stole steal no more but rather let him labor walking with his hands husband let him labor walking with his sons the sin that is good that she may have to give to him that needeth. he must be able to supply the needs of the wife and the needs of the family the needs of the children in proverbs chapter 14 proverbs chapter 14 verse 1 every wise woman buildeth her house every wise woman wife buildeth a house but the foolish is talking about the wife the foolish plucketh it down with her hands you want a good family it's not just that i love i produce intimacy and when you bring everything home i can cook it and provide for the family you also use your hands to build up your family as a wife god will help all of us proverbs chapter 31 Proverbs chapter 1, verses 10 and 19. In verse 10, who can find a virtuous woman? For a price is above rubies. Verse 19, 
she lays her hands to the spindle and her hands hold the distaff. You see why? Who is the heart? You understand? I supply. I supply like the heart pumps the blood all through the body. I also supply. I also give. And I'm not waiting that the man only will be the breadwinner. If there is anything I can do with my hand, I will do it for the provision of the family. And I will make available everything that I gather together for the progress and for the strength of the family. In Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 10, Ecclesiastes 9 verse 10, Whatsoever thy hand findest to do, we must be resourceful. We must be imaginative. We must strategize. And we must look ahead and look around. What can I do for the provision of the family, both the man and the woman? I'm a graduate. I cannot find office work. Find something. Your hand must not be idle. To build up a family, we need the heart. We need the head. We need the hands. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy mind. For there is no work, no device, no knowledge, no wisdom in the grave whither thou goest. First Thessalonians chapter 4. In First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 11. And that she study, endeavor, try, be diligent, to be quiet, and to do your own business. Husband and wife, to work with your own hands. As we commanded you, do something and work with your hands and provide for the family. Your family will be prospered in jesus name our families will stand strong our families will stand competent our families will stand totally provided for in jesus name second thessalonians chapter three i'm reading from verse seven Second Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 7 For yourselves know how ye ought to follow us For we behave not ourselves disorderly among you Neither did we eat any man's bread for naught Don't allow your wife to be begging in the community Don't allow your children to be begging in the community. Use your hands and provide for the family. But we wrought with labor and travail night and day that we might not be chargeable to any of you. Not, be, not because we have not power, but to make ourselves an example unto you to follow us. For even when we were, we, we were with you. For even when we were there with you, this we commanded, commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. We will work. Husbands, we will work. Wives, we will work. Everyone in the family, you will do something to provide for the livelihood of the family. For we hear in verse 11 that there are some which walk among you disorderly, walking not at all, but are busy bodies. Now, them that are such, we command and exhort. 
by our Lord Jesus Christ that with quietness they work and eat their own bread. And as you eat that bread and drink that water, the Lord will bless your bread. The Lord will bless your water. And the Lord will take sickness and infirmity out of the midst of your family in Jesus' name. To round it up, everyone in the family must manifest love. The wife, the husband, the children, the parents, everyone. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, a member of the church, a minister in the church, you are active, and you speak the doctrine effectively, and you teach the word effectively, and you speak the language of theology, and you speak the language of angelic spirituality, and have not charity, have not love. There's no love in the family. We rush out of the family, have an assignment, have a duty. We neglect our wives and neglect our, our children. We neglect our husbands. I'm going for duty. If you have not love in the family, you have become a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. Do I have the gifts of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge? You take your time, you're reading the Bible all the time, and you're getting to the mysteries of the kingdom of God all the time. There's no time to love the husband. There's no time to love the wife. I must understand the depths of revelation in the Bible. Look at this. Even if you are that, and though I have all fears so that I can, I can remove mountains. And the, you know, maybe the husband, I'm fasting today. And when I'm fasting, I don't want to see anybody's face. And then tomorrow I'm fasting. And the next day I'm fasting. I must have power. I must move mountains. The power to move mountains. And when the husband finishes his own marathon fasting, then the wife begins her own. I'm fasting today too. As a wife, I must work miracles. As a wife, I must move mountains. You are fasting all the time, and the fasting is drawing you far and far apart. Even though you fast and you have all the faith, so you can remove mountains and have not love, I am nothing. Whatever you do in the family, spiritual things, church matters, whatever takes you away from the family, I'm always there, I'm always there. And you know, people are calling me, they need counseling. People are calling me, they need advice. And people are calling me, they need directives. But your wife doesn't have your attention. Your husband doesn't have your attention. It says, even if you did all that, and there's no love in the family, there's no intimacy in the family, you are nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, I'm philanthropic. And yet, my children are dying of hunger. They're dying of need. They don't have new clothes. My wife does not have new clothes. The husband does not have new clothes. We're giving out everything. It's a generous man. It's a generous woman. Don't mind him. Don't mind her. The wife is dying. The husband is dying of hunger and need. And yet, he gives all his good to feed the poor. And though I give my body to be burnt, and have not love, have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Charity suffereth long. How long is long? Longer than the end of each day. Charity suffereth long. It's because uh, so-called so Christian men and women, they cannot suffer long, longer than the end of today. That's why they retaliate. That's why they fight back. That's why they go to the court. That's why they separate. 
that's why they divorce but charity love suffers long and is kind charity envies not charity vaunts not itself hey woman sit down i'm a graduate man find your place i'm more educated than you are head of the home head of the home head of the home and yet you understand i have higher certificate than you have but you know my sister you know my brother charity love vaunts not itself it's not popped up does not behave itself unseemly unkindly seeks not her own is not easily provoked there are houses there are homes where anger is more pronounced than love but it's not easily provoked thinketh no evil rejoices not in iniquity but rejoices in the truth bears all things somebody give me a good amen, amen. you bear you submit you control yourself you don't say i can't take it any longer that's a statement that says my love is finished my love is run out grace is no more available i can't stand it any longer love beareth all things believeth all things hopeth all things tell me the rest there you know i want to hear a good voice there endureth all things verse 8 love never faileth love will not fail in your family love will not cease in your family love will produce every good thing that will keep your family alive and active and happy and fulfilled well provided for in jesus name the heart where is the heart of the family can i see you raise up your hand the heart the heart i'm looking for them the heart what will make you a healthy heart the head where is the head in the family where are you the lord will make you a competent capable providing head in jesus name the hands in the family where are the hands in the family the lord will bless those hands if you are jobless the lord will provide if there's anything that is making your hand inactive inoperative the lord will take every attack and every affliction away in jesus name abundance for your family surplus for your family power in your family provision in your family a new lease of life in your family in jesus name rise up and talk to the lord lord make me the heart i ought to be make me the head i ought to be and make me the physical and the spiritual and the progressive and the providing hands i ought to be open your mouth and let the lord bless you